Flow like water. Flow like water. Flow like water. Hey everyone, you know, welcome back to another episode of the DYCD at home filmmaking series. I am Daron Burroughs, and today we have a special guest uh, by the name of Josephine Decker. She is a director who has worked in film and in television. Josephine, thank you for joining us. How are you? I'm doing great. I'm so glad to be here and so excited to e-meet all of you. So I'm a filmmaker. Uh, I've made a lot of mostly feature films, and I've also worked in music videos a little bit. Almost 10 years I've been working in narrative feature films, telling long-form stories uh, that are fictional. You get to work with all these different incredible people and being a director, your number one job is communicating. Can you communicate well with all these interesting people that you've hired to work on your project with you? So the collaboration part is really why I love my job so much. Everyone else is working on aspects of the story, but you are the person who is supposed to be like holding the story together as a whole in your head at all times. You're helping guide the actors. You're the person who grounds and reminds everyone else, where are you in the story? What has just happened? What's come right before? What is on your mind? There's four aspects of things you want to show in your film really quickly. It's what is your world? Who are your characters? What are the stakes? between the characters and what is the conflict? What is the central thing that keeps you wanting to see this movie and what makes you want to keep watching? Joe versus the Volcano, it left such an impression and I think I've, I can see that film in my mind. So the world again is the background. Okay, this is not exactly the real world. It's pretty, it's kind of exaggerated because it's all just gray and black and white. And so they established his world. When you meet your character, you get a strong sense of them really quickly. I sent this clip from As Good As It Gets, and this clip, which is from the, close to the beginning of the movie, Jack Nicholson's character sits down across from Helen Hunt's character, and you can see immediately that he's a very OCD guy. These two people very quickly connect to each other. When you're introducing the character, you can also introduce the stakes and the conflict in their world. I think actors are really smart, and I think it's important to really respect them and their own choices. You don't have to say, like, you're sad, you're happy, you're scared. You can just let the actor figure out how they feel. If you're trying to get a certain kind of performance out of an actor, you can up whatever feeling you want to get out of them. You can give them some backstory, too, that helps them understand maybe why would this be so upsetting. I was thinking a lot about Charlie Chaplin too because he's such a strong character. I've pointed to these characters because within seconds of seeing them enter the frame, you know something about them. They're a little bit different than maybe anyone you've ever seen. Then you're ready for anything because you don't know what to expect. Like at any moment, is he going to die? Is something going to blow up? For him, he doesn't know the stakes, which is um, part of what makes, I think, good comedy. Your camera is the eye. It's the audience's eye. It's how the audience sees the movies. How close do you want to be to your characters? How far do you want to be from your characters? There's something really important in films called perspective, which is just whose perspective are you in when you're witnessing different scenes? Do you want your audience to feel very intimate with this character? Do you want the character to feel small in a space? Those things will communicate very different energies to the audience. And so the question is really that you can just keep asking is whose perspective do I want to be in? For me, I come from a musical background and I think of it as sort of like you're conducting the symphony of the movie and you get to put all the pieces together. And so you can be really creative with the sound effects that you use. When you're editing, you can be very playful and play with music and how things cut together. And you can definitely make things like funnier or more authentic when you get into editing if you need to. I personally like to watch things that have survived the test of time. What are your friends' favorite movies? What are your parents' favorite movies? What are the movies that stuck with them over time? Seeing some of those really great films might give you some ideas and also about what does stand the test of time. When you're a filmmaker, you can draw inspiration not just from films, but from so many other disciplines. Maybe you're a musician also. Maybe you're really into fine art. Maybe you love photography. There's so many places you can draw inspiration from. It doesn't have to just be movies, because I think that sometimes really good cinema comes from outside the cinema.